You have your very personalized character concept and some ideas for some really cool powers. And now you just have to build them or really determine their cost. But that involves math. So really, how hard is that math? I'm going to build two different powers using three different tools to show you how easy the math really is. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Norman, and this is the Powers video, Volume 2, Part 1. My first cut of this video was over an hour long, and no one wants to hear that much about math. So I broke it into three videos, and in this video I will build, determine the cost of, two powers using pen and paper. Uh, okay, a keyboard and Google Docs. But I'll walk you through the math. In part two and part three, I'll show you how to build, determine the cost, in GCS, and then in the tiddlywiki that I had hinted at in an earlier video. But first, some clarifications. As you can see, I intermingle build with determine the cost of, since they are, again, two sides of the same coin. I use build a lot because it's quicker even though, in the end, I'm really just trying to determine the cost. But I'll say this, if you build a power using the purchasing rules as written, and you get the power that you want, then you're guaranteed that the cost is correct. And for the most part, this is how I build my powers. Usually, the majority of times that I need to estimate a cost is when I'm creating accessibility limitations, and I have to determine how much of a cost reduction a certain limitation is worth. Also, the word modifiers. In the context of building a power, modifiers means both enhancements and limitations. Yeah, modifiers is also used when determining success rolls. But hey, the word's just too useful. It's kind of like the word level in D&D. You can have a character level and a spell level and a dungeon level. Well, GURPS has success modifiers and power modifiers. What can you do? And finally, min-max. In the context of role-playing games, min-maxing usually means a character-building strategy of maximizing a specific desirable ability or skill or other power of a character, and minimizing everything else. I specifically use it to mean that when I'm building a GURPS character, I'm applying the math to get the most favorable result. And you'll see a little bit about what that means later. There are two thoughts on this issue. Some people prefer to build their character true to their design concept and let the costs fall where they may. And others, with math OCD like myself, may modify the concept just a bit so the math works better. Well, guess what? It doesn't really matter. You can do it however you like, and your players can differ. It won't really affect the game that much, and if your players are having fun, then does it really matter? So I'm going to build two spells, powers, a fireball spell and a spell I called You Are Groot, starting with the fireball. So looking in the basic set, this is an innate attack. I want it to do uh, damage type burn, and I want it to do two dice of damage. So that equates to 10 points total. And now I'm going to add modifiers. These are either enhancements or limitations that will affect the power. First is magical, minus 10%. Uh, this isn't really listed in the basic set, so that's why I have it in quotes. Uh, you can actually find it later in powers books and stuff like that, or all over the forums. But the concept is this is the power modifier that says this is a magical attack so that it can be dispelled by anti-magic and things like that. Now, right out of the book, an innate attack has a range of 100 yards. And uh, my guy doesn't play for the NFL, so he can't throw 100 yards, especially trying to keep this combustible ball of flame together. So we're going to add a reduced range limitation. So this reduces the maximum range from 100, you divide by 5 now, to down to 20 yards. Okay, that's, that's better. Now when you reduce the range, you're also reducing the half damage range. And innate attack has a half damage range of... 10 yards, which we've now divided by five, so it's two yards. So anything beyond two yards is only going to do half damage. So I want to increase that, and there is an enhancement for that. I'm increasing the one half damage value, just the half damage, but I'm doing it five times. So it's going to take that two yards and increase it out to 10 yards. So now my magical attack can be thrown 20 yards, but anything after 10 yards, it does half damage. Now I want this to 
explode in in a in an area but the explosion rules you know damage tapers off as you get away from the center of the explosion and honestly that's more work than i want to have to deal with while we're playing so i'm going to sort of simulate that with area effect and i'm just going to say yes this area effect this three yard radius so to speak is just going to uh, experience all of this damage now if you notice the area effect is three yards if you look in the basic set it doesn't have a three yard rating but uh, again pk levine has a post on the steve jackson forums where he goes through and describes well if you th here's the intervening levels and so i want to do the three yards radius now why does it say five hex diameter well that's because if you're playing theater of the mind and you're standing at a point, the area effect is three yards around you, okay? But if you're playing on a hex map, you don't have a point. You're standing on a hex. And so the radius counts the hex you're in. So it's actually only five hexes across, which, which is fine. It's just, you need to know that. It's basically two times the radius minus one. Now I'm going to throw cost fatigue in there because I think all magical spells and things need to have some cost to them. Otherwise the magician can just cast them all day long with no repercussions. And I really like using fatigue as uh, another value that you have to manage besides hit points, your fatigue points. Um, it's actually affecting us in our current game. Just last night, we completed a rather serious combat against a bunch of dragon folk and a wyvern, and we made it to the uh, center of town uh, with no injuries. Well, I'm sorry, no deaths. We were all injured and all very tired. And they came out and said, hey, there's somebody's breaking over the wall just over here. You need to go over there. And we're like, hey, can we sleep for a couple of hours? We are all exhausted. I think we're down to four and five fatigue points, one or two more points and we will be reeling. And they're like, no, no, it's breaking over the wall. So it's a very interesting thing where we're having to manage our hit points and our fatigue points. So making the magical spells cost a fatigue point um, balances that out, I think. Now for this spell, and actually for these spells, what I like to do is I still want it to be based on the IQ of the caster. So you're, you know, remembering the words correctly or whatnot. And so I have it require an IQ roll. And then two sort of well-known accessibility limitations. Uh, if you're casting a spell and you need to softly speak some word, then that's a minus 5%. If you've got to loudly proclaim lots of words, it's minus 10%. And then the same thing, if it's like a one-handed small gesture, it's minus 5%. But if you have to use both hands and large gestures, it's minus 10%. That also means if you're gagged or in a cone of silence, you can't speak the word. Or if your hands are bound, then you can't make the, the gesture, so you can't cast the spell. Okay, so how do we do the math? Well, what you do is... You take all the percentages and you add them and subtract them together to get a total modifier at the bottom. And so it basically it's just simple math. It's minus 10, minus 20, plus 10, plus 75. Well, that's what the calculator is for. So minus 10, minus 20, plus 10, plus 75, minus 10, minus 10, minus 5, minus 5, enter. So that's plus 25. Note, this number can go to, it's unlimited in the positive direction, but in the negative direction, you cannot go below minus 80. Okay, how is that math used? Well, you take the starting points, the 10 points, and you're going to multiply it by 100% plus whatever modifier you got, 25%. And of course, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 plus 0.25. So 10 times 1.25 is 12.5, but you always round up. You can't have fractional point values. So this becomes 13 points. So I usually mark that like this. So this spell, Fireball, does 2D burning damage with all these enhancements and limitations, and it costs 13 points. Now to hit with it, 
it's an innate attack. So you have to have a skill to do the attack with. And so we're gonna pick innate attack projectile. So this is the, the magician is throwing it like a baseball. And there you have it. There's our fireball spell or power. It's built just like a power. So now we'll go on to the you are Groot spell. Now this is an affliction. This is how you provide buffs for your party members. It's also how you afflict enemies with bad things. But in this particular case, we're trying to do good stuff for our own people. Now, normally affliction is resisted by a health roll and you can buy up the affliction level to um, make it harder for the opponent to resist. But in the case of a buff, your own party members aren't going to resist. So you don't ever need to buy it above the first level, which is 10 points. Now, one of the things you can do with an affliction is you can grant an advantage or a disadvantage to another player or NPC. And that's what we want to do here is we want to grant an advantage to our other players. Well, that means we have to build that advantage. So I'm going to create another advantage called Groot Skin, which is just damage resistance two. So it gives them an additional two points of armor and it costs 10 points for that. By default, damage resistance is like exterior armor, but the advantage has listed uh, its own limitation called tough skin, where it's basically just your skin that's getting harder and stopping some damage. Now this advantage is magical, which means if I cast it on somebody or they've got it and somehow they get hit by some anti-magic thing, well, then it stops working. And then I wanted to add a nuisance effect, which is sort of like an accessibility limitation. It's basically something bad that happens to the person that's getting this advantage. And what's happening is it's turning them grotesquely ugly such that they get minus two to any reaction roll to anybody around them. And probably a fright check to small children. I mean, who knows? I'll probably be pretty mean with it. Now, following the same math that I did above, we total up all the limitations. It's minus 60%. So that becomes 100% plus a minus 60%, which becomes one minus 0.6. So you get 0.4. So the final cost for this particular advantage is four points. And that four points is relevant because when you're granting an affliction, the advantage that you're granting determines the enhancement cost. So it's plus 10% for every character point of the advantage that you're granting. So the advantage is four points that I'm granting. So the advantage is a plus 40%. And of course it's magical, so it could be dispelled. And an interesting enhancement that I found in Power Ups 4, and actually it was Enraged Eggplant that showed it to me. Now, normally an affliction is a resistance roll against health. So the target would roll their health and by whatever number they fail is how long they're afflicted. But the fixed duration enhancement is made for afflictions that are positive in nature. And so instead of determining, uh, how long the affliction lasts by how much the person resists, it just sets it to a set three minutes. You just get three minutes of duration, which in GURPS combat, that's 180 rounds of combat. So it lasts pretty long for combat, but doesn't really last long for the adventure because you walk down the street and you've just used up three minutes. So we'll add the enhancement increased duration times 10 for plus 40%. So that'll bring a total up to 30 minutes. So that's not too bad. Now affliction is actually a ranged attack, but I don't want to do that. I want to say, go up to somebody and touch them that then I can cast the spell. So we can convert any ranged attack to a melee attack. Um, this is reach one. So basically anybody in the hex next to me, I can touch them. And then I'm going to add the other kind of standard uh, spell enhancements that I always add. So again, we'll add up the modifiers. So that's plus 15%. And again, following the math, 10 times 1.15, 11.5. So again, we have to round up. That becomes 12 character points. So that's the math. 
probably the hardest math you'll normally use in GURPS. And see, it wasn't that hard. But even still, there are tools that will do this work for you. And in the next two videos, I'll build these same powers again using those tools. If these videos have been helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will answer them. And as always, thank you for watching.